Kids Ministry Leaders, good morning. My heart is so full right now. It's about to burst. I just pulled over the side of the road. I'm sitting at Meyer Park, and I have to tell you what is going on in my heart. I just left Oak Crest Intermediate School, um, where I taught the lesson that's coming up for this week on Daniel about resolve. And I've been reading a book, and it's called Missing, and I would love for you to get this book and start reading it. And uh, But here's what God is doing in my life. First of all, I want to share with you if you Ephesians 5, okay, ready, verse 15, look carefully then how you walk, look carefully, okay, stop a minute, take a look at your life and look at it carefully, how you are walking, how you are living, how you are doing life with family, with friends, at church, just look at your life, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, Listen, it is time for us kids ministry leaders to get wise, to rise up and say, first of all, I just want to talk to you about kids ministry, about being wise. We have an opportunity to raise up the next generation of believers, and I need your help. We need your help. We have got to get together, and we have got to do this. And what that means is we walk wisely. You know how you do that? Listen what it says. Making the best I'm looking at my Bible. Making the best use of the time. This year, you have a group of children in your class. You only get this year with this group of kids. Are you making the best use of your time? You are the one God has chosen to put in their life to lead to Him, to teach Him about Him, teach them about Him. You are the one. Are you making the best use of your time? It says, because the days are evil. And our days are evil. You know that the world that our kids live in is evil. And so now is the time. Life group leaders, I am asking you, get up. Get in God's Word. Study it. Read it. Use your daily Bible reading as a guide. Every morning when you get up, say, I'm going to read a couple of those verses from that daily Bible reading to prepare my heart for what I'm going to be teaching on Sunday because this Sunday may be the only Sunday a kid has to hear about Jesus Christ. This week, your class may be the only person you to tell them about Jesus. So please make the best use of your time. Now, there's three things I want to ask you to do with the kids. I know this is going to be a long video, but please hang in there with me. Number one, we have got to help our kids be critical thinkers. If we don't want to lose them, they need to, number one, know Jesus Christ. But number two, they need to know why they believe what they believe. They need to know who He is, but why He's the Savior of the world, why the Bible is true, why we believe the Bible, where did the Bible come from, who is God. We've got to teach them not just that Daniel was taken from Babylon, uh, taken from uh, Jerusalem to Babylon, but they need to know who God is, why God did that, and take them deeper. Ask them the deep questions. How? Why? Get them thinking critically so that when they leave us and they're out in high school, they're out in middle school, they're out in college and people say, well, why do you believe the Bible? Why don't you believe this Bible? Why don't you believe in this God? They can know because if they have the foundation to stand on, then they can prove what they believe. And the more you know why you believe something, the more it means to you. So please, this week and for the rest of the year, say, I'm going to help develop critical thinkers, not just information, but the how, the why. And that may mean for you, life group leader, that you've got to say, I'm going deeper. I'm going to figure out why do I believe that Jesus is the Son of God? How do I prove that? How do I prove the Bible is real and true? So number one, critical thinkers. Number two, we have to empower our kids to know that they can change the world. And I'm not talking about going out and, you know, they've got to go to Africa tomorrow or whatever that means, but God has put them in their schools. Think about every child in your class. If every child in your class knows that you are the salt and the light of the world and the earth, so your job all Monday through Saturday when you're not with me in life groups 
is to change the world one life at a time, one friend at a time, one word at a time. If you're a singer, it's through your music. If you can make videos, it's through your videos. If it's through your skateboarding, it's while you're skateboarding. But let them know now they are the church now. They're not the church of the next generation. They are the church of Jesus Christ today. And so we have to help them to know that now is your time to change the world. Who knows? They may not be here tomorrow. So now is their time to change the world. Begin to plant that seed of thought in their mind over and over again. Third, critical thinkers, you can change the world. You are the church, the body of Christ now. You can change the world. Number three, you have the power to choose. Teach them that. They have the power right now inside of them to choose and make the wise choice. You're going to be teaching about Daniel this week. Daniel resolved to obey Jesus Christ. We need to help them know that no matter what Disney Channel tells them, no matter what the radio tells them and all these singers tell them, no matter what their friends tell them, no matter what TV tells them, they have the power to choose. You choose your friends and you choose what kind of friend you want to be. You can say no to a friend. You choose what goes in your body. You choose what goes on your body. Don't let somebody tell you what your body needs to be. You have the power to choose. And God has given you a brain to make the wise choice for what is best for your life. You have the power to choose whether you're going to follow Jesus or not. That is your choice. That is their choice at the age of second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. You choose every day to follow Jesus and to be intentional about that. You have the choice of your attitude. I'm going to be saucy or I'm going to be kind. I'm going to love. I'm going to be selfish. They have the power to choose. Begin to teach them now. You have the power to choose. And so critical thinkers... They are the church of Christ now to change the world now. Number three, they have the power to make choices. They choose. They make the wise decisions. And number four, they need to experience God now. They need to learn to hear God's voice at this age. Remember Samuel? He's laying in bed and he's like, mm, I heard my voice, but I didn't know who that was. Who did he run to? Okay, that's us. That's who the kids need to run to. They need to be able to come to you and say, you know what? I heard Jesus say to me, because when they've given their life to Jesus, Jesus is their shepherd and the sheep know his voice and they hear his voice. So they need to be able to experience God now because when you have a true experience with God, think about the first time you heard God's voice, the first time you truly experienced God. That's when your life began to change. It wasn't just stories from the Bible. It was your life. It was your life story. It was God active, active and alive in you. So they need those moments now. So in your life groups, give them time to think. Don't, don't just be the one who's like, bleh, 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 verbally vomiting information on them. Give them time to think. Give them time to hear. Give them time to process. Challenge them to do their daily Bible reading and to have deep thinking times where there's no sound, there's no noise. They turn off the TV and just say, just sit there and just listen for God. Just talk to God. Tell Him everything that's on your heart, everything that's on your mind. And then read His Word and just sit and listen and tell them. God will speak to you through things you might see in your head, thoughts you might have in your head. Um, every thought, every voice and, and a voice. You may hear a voice in your head and you will know it's God because it aligns with his word. They need to experience God, but, but listen, they can't do that unless they have leaders and people in their life who are challenging them to be critical thinkers, who are telling them, you change the world now. You are the church of Christ now. Unless they have leaders who say, you choose who you follow. You choose to follow Jesus. You choose to follow the world. You choose your friends. You choose what kind of friend you want to be. You choose 
to make the right choice unless they have leaders who are telling them this. We can't water down and dumb down the, the people that God has created our children to be. You are the one to tell them and to help them experience God. So I know this has been a long video. I hope that you will listen to it over and over again and that you will look at your life how you are walking, how you are living, and that you won't be unwise and throw away this one opportunity that God has given you with children. Don't be unwise, but be wise and say, I am going to make the best opportunity of every Sunday I have, every time I can email, call a family, write a kid and say, I was thinking about you this week and I know that you can make a difference. Remember, you have the power to choose your life and who you will follow to send them a card that says this week be a deep thinker this week spend time with God you be the one to hold them accountable to reading God's word every day if you don't do it who will do you realize that God has entrusted Champion Forest with over a thousand children we have to make the best use of this opportunity. I am asking you to join me to say, I, Stephanie Chase, am going to develop critical thinkers. I am going to help children know that they have the power to change the world. That they can, and how do that, who is that power come from? Jesus Christ living in them. To help them to know that you choose, you have the choice to make in your life, whether you follow Jesus, whether you don't, and that you will encourage them and give them time to experience God for real. <sighs> Thank you so much for letting me get all that off my heart. I am praying for you. God, I pray for Champion Forest right now. I pray for every life group leader. I pray that today their lives and their hearts, you will change them to know that they have an opportunity this year to impact the next generation, that they will know that there are 2.3 billion children, God, in this world, 2.3 billion children between the ages of four and 14 and that God, 85%, nearly 85% of people choose to follow Jesus between the ages of 4 and 14. Don't let us be unwise, God. But today, empower us, inspire us, move us to make the best of the time that you've given. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.